Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Robert French and I'm an applications engineer specializing in 3D printing. Today we're going to be talking about model settings within GrabCAD Print and specifically the Body tab. We can find the Model Settings tab on the right hand side of the screen. Now initially all of the settings are grayed out until we select on a body. Once we do, we see the different options available to us including infill style, infill density, body thickness, infill angle, thick and thin walls, and use variable width fill. Now we're going to take some time to go through each one of these starting with infill style. There are five different types of infill styles including solid, sparse high density, sparse double dense, sparse, and hexagram. Let's take a look at each one of these by analyzing the toolpaths. First we have solid infill. This uses the most material possible and will produce the strongest part possible. Though it won't always have the best visual quality because we're asking the printer to place toolpath in every single location. This gives the 3D printer no room to play, no room to make small adjustments and give a good visually high quality part. Next we have sparse high density. This is going to maintain a great amount of the strength from the solid infill but we're not going to have the infill issues because we're giving the printer a little bit of room to play, a little bit of adjustment in the tool pass to produce a visually optimized part. Next we have sparse double dense. This is going to use much less material, it's going to have much less strength, but if strength isn't a key component of what we're looking for then this is something we would typically use. Next we have sparse, even less material than the double dense style. This is going to be the least material usage, the least strength out of any of the 3D print body settings. So if strength once again isn't a key component, this is a great setting to use. Lastly we have hexagram. This is the best balance between strength and material usage if you're trying to optimize both. Now we can adjust the last three, everything except solid and sparse high density by using the infill density slider. This can give us a little bit more tactile control over material usage versus strength. The next two settings we see are body thickness and infill angle. Now body thickness is going to change the infill settings near the surfaces of your model. So it's going to add what we call more rasters or tool paths near the edges of your part. This can help increase strength in those critical outer areas and even allow for some post-processing. We also have infill angle which is going to change the angle at which those rasters or tool paths are laid inside the part and we can see an example of that right here in this tool path preview. Notice on the edges of the part, in the center bore and around the different holes we see increased rasters, increased strength, and then if we also look at the raster towards the middle of the part we're no longer running kind of up and down on the screen but rather left to right. The last two settings are thick and thin walls and variable width fill. When a parts geometry gets analyzed for toolpath it might see only one toolpath or raster being placed in a certain area. Stratasys recommends at least two toolpaths in order to have adequate strength so with this setting turned on your geometry will be slightly altered but you'll have that necessary strength to make a good quality part. Variable width fill allows the width of the toolpath to be altered to help increase part strength. When you're laying down your outer rasters it might leave a gap inside that's a little too small for your nominal toolpath width to fit but by allowing it to vary you can place additional material inside and increase that part strength. Thank you for watching this video on the FDM model settings within GrabCAD Print. Hope you enjoyed it.